Welcome to this video presenting results from investigations with Laguerre Gauss, or LG, modes at the Glasgow 10 meter prototype gravitational wave detector. The prototype houses two fully suspended optical cavities which are used for testing new interferometry techniques. We have been investigating the compatibility of higher order LG modes with standard interferometry techniques due to their potential for reducing the effects of thermal noise in gravitational wave detectors. Here you can see the new LG mode preparation bench. The purple path is the old laser path, the red path is the new LG33 path, and the green path is the new LG00 or fundamental mode path. The LG33 beam is generated by an etched diffractive optic towards the left side of the picture. Both the new LG33 and LG00 paths pass through a linear mode cleaner, which can be seen near the top of the picture. This ensures that they both have the same alignment and beam parameters downstream. This is the current layout of the core prototype optics. The new beam is injected to the vacuum system at the left and then passed into the top cavity. We analyze the light reflected and transmitted from this cavity. Now we move on to a video of the light transmitted through the cavity end mirror, along with photodiode traces of the transmitted and reflected light power when the fundamental beam is injected into the cavity and the laser frequency is scanned. We can see that one mode peak is clearly dominant. This is the fundamental mode. This shows that the alignment and mode matching is of a high standard. Next we will see a similar cavity scan when the Order 9 LG33 beam is injected. The additional green trace is the demodulated error signal used later for feedback control. There is still a dominant peak at mode order 9, but there seems to be more power in parasitic modes than for the fundamental mode case. The next step was to lock the cavity to the order 9 peak with feedback to the laser frequency when the LG33 mode was injected. Here you see the cavity swing freely and then locked to the order 9 peak. This lock is not yet very stable. This is most likely due to cavity misalignments caused by the breathing motion of the mirrors since the tanks were not yet under vacuum. Now we will see a longer video of a more stable lock to the Order 9 peak. And we also see some mode hopping here. At first we locked to what looks like a Hermite Gauss or HG09 mode. We then gave the input mirror a longitudinal impulse to flip to other nearby modes. Here you see some HG90 and then the 45 and others. The fact that we can separately lock to different modes of the same order proves that they have different resonant conditions. They are pseudo-degenerate. Now it's clear that none of the modes shown so far are the LG33 mode. Here we see a video of the most LG33-like mode we were able to lock to. These clips support the hypothesis that the LG33 mode is strongly affected by imperfections in the mirror surfaces, such as astigmatism. Astigmatism on the end mirror, for example, will lead to a breaking of the circular symmetry of the system, and therefore the splitting of the resonance conditions of the HG modes of the same order. This will also suppress the resonance of circularly symmetric LG modes in the cavity. Our next steps will involve using different cavity input mirrors to investigate different finesses as well as the effects of different mirror surface distortions. On behalf of the gravitational wave groups at the Universities of Birmingham and Glasgow, I would like to thank you for watching this video. This work has been supported by the Science and Technology Facilities Council.